personal philosophy about modifying my Forerunner is that I don't change anything until I need it. My lift, tires, and rack were the first things that I either changed or added to my Forerunner. But skid plates, you see, I don't really see a lot of terrain in which I need them. But I have some things coming up, and I figured it was time. There's a lot of quality options out there, but I chose RCI because I happen to know several people that are running them that are happy with them. I chose aluminum because I've become increasingly conscious of the weight um, of the vehicle and, and the fact that it increases as I add things to it. Plus, I didn't really feel like I needed the rigid protection that steel offers. This set includes a skid plate that replaces the factory front that comes um, on this model, which is the trail model. It adds a transmission skid and it adds a transfer case skid. There's other options out there like A-arms and fuel tanks and all that other fuel tank skids, but the trail model actually comes with a fuel tank skid as well. And I just don't see needing anything in addition to the fuel tank skid that's already there. And I decided to put it up on ramps just to um, make it a little more convenient and easy to get underneath it. I'm really not sure exactly what I'm doing here I think it should be as simple as just undoing some bolts and putting some new bolts in and stuff. I think there's like eight or 10 bolts total in all. I know that the first step is I need to remove this front skid plate and I know there's just a few bolts there. And as usual, I'm trying to do something in an amount of time that probably isn't adequate to be able to do this. But uh, it's about 140, 150 right now. And I need to be done no later than probably 4.30 because tonight I've got a company event and um, as a business owner, you need to be there for your employees. All right then, let's get started. By the way, did you know that these things right here, I learned this in Overland Expo, these little hooks that you'll find at all four corners are not suitable for recovery points. These are actually used to tie the vehicle down when it's going across the uh, overseas whenever it's being brought over here to the States. And, um... Oh, let's see here. 10 or 13? It's not gonna be 10. Let's try 13. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's uh, it's 13. Correction, it's 12, not 13. Okay, so my theory is this. I don't really want to undo these bolts and this thing smack me in the face. So I'm going to take off bolts from opposing sides and then I'll take one off at a time and gently lower it down onto my face. Hmm. Still away. See why you want a skid plate here. There's all kinds of sensitive looking stuff. Hmm. 
I heard lots of uh, debris falling out of this whenever I took it off, but I didn't really see anything. Looks like everything is held up pretty well, even this little this little mesh thing right here that I swear was really bent. Yeah, let's get the new one on. Two 30 millimeter bolts, two 40, 40 millimeter bolts, four washers, two nylon bushings that are going in the back. And the 30 millimeter bolts are going to go in the front. So these will go here in the front. The 40 will be in the back. The washers in both places. And these things right here will go in the back just like that. So yeah, I think that just about sums it up. Interesting side note, the vehicle's bolt was 12 millimeter, but these from RCI are 13. This is what I did. So you can see the slot right there. I just threaded these bolts in right here with the washer. And then I did that on both sides and then I just slid the skid right onto it. And then I went to the back here and I put the bolt through this hole with the washer obviously right there. And I threaded it in on one side right here. And then on the other side over here, I did the exact same thing. Only I put that uh, that little bushing, two nylon bushings that are going in the back. I put that on there and then I threaded that in and then I came over to this side right here and I unthreaded that bolt and then I put the bushing in there. I don't think you can see it because the lighting is not really good but it's right there. It should be noted, the instructions say to leave it all a little bit loose if you're putting on other skids because the other skids are gonna need to slide in. So I need to remove these bolts right here and right here. And it says in the instructions I can discard those bolts. You know, it's coming up on Halloween. Have you guys seen that uh, Shia LaBeouf scary play thingamajigger? There's no one around and your phone is dead. Shia LaBeouf. Running for your life from Shia LaBeouf. He's brandishing a knife, it's Shia LaBeouf. You can see where I really banged up these cross members. You know that nylon bushing that was up here in the front? Well, they want that in between the, um, they want it between the skid plate and the cross member. You have to lift it up a little bit to slide this in between the, that nylon bushing and the actual cross member itself so that the skid plate, the aluminum and aluminum is actually touching together, if that makes sense. So here's a pro tip. Make sure you leave that bolt unthreaded a little bit. The instructions call for a quarter inch. I'd do as much as you possibly can. And then uh, if you do for a fingernail clipping, I put it off because it helps to have longer fingernails to uh, slide that thing up. Also, I'm keeping everything a little bit loose. As soon as I get everything done, I'll go through and tighten it all up. I just realized something I might have a problem with. The rear transfer case skid, I may need to use bolt holes that I used for my sliders. So I guess we'll see how that goes. So it says, remove lower exhaust hanger bolt on passenger side on the inside frame rails. 0309 Forerunner and FJ models only. Well, I've got a 14, so I guess that doesn't apply to me. <laughs> Loosen upper bolt if necessary to provide enough room for T-case plate flanges to slide 
in between exhaust frame bracket. I guess we just figure it out. So, if this is the front, oh, how convenient. Fits in there quite well. And then this will bolt on like that. That will bolt onto those front two bolts that we saw a minute ago. And then I have to figure out where this thing is gonna go. This hole in the middle, towards the top, that's the back. And this thing, this shape right here, it's in the back. totally sure about this. Let me show you why. I'm pretty sure that the bolt hole that I'm wanting to use is that hole right there and if I put you know this thing up there it doesn't exactly sit flush and level which may not really matter but the thing I'm most concerned about is the fact that I'm not sure if uh, this right here is KDSS related but Pretty sure that this is the bolt hole I need to use, and the cross member support frame thing doesn't fit. So I need to loosen this, which might not be a problem, but it also might be. I'm optimistic I can make this work. I'm just going to take this out all the way just to get the bolt out of the way. No, so that bolt hole seems so much higher. No, it would have to be right there. It's the bolt hole that these KDS lines that I just loosened. That's where, that's where this is going to have to go into. I bet. Let's try and get <coughs> this side in first. I got it. There's just no room to work in here. I have to figure out how I can get this thing tightened. I have an idea. I have a little wrench. How was school? I'm installing these pieces of metal under my car. Look at the car we bought. You guys bought a car? Uh -huh. Where? No, we, we had to use the car. <coughs> oh, I know. That's one of our company vans, huh? I have another pro tip. Oh. So you see these things right here? Well, they're connected to that uh, cross member support thingamajigger right here. But, you know, those bolts over there are in there, but the, this right here, it just has a lot of pressure coming down. And so you really had to kind of push this up, like really push it up to get these bolt holes in. This side happened to be easier than this side. But I was about to get my jack out, <clears throat> just a little bottle jack to put some um, weight pressure on this. But instead, I decided to just tighten these up as tight as I could get them. And consequently, it worked. But you can see here, you see how much space we had here? Same. 
before I tighten all these things down, I want to tighten the front down first because that's where it kind of it slides in with the slot. I want to make sure that that one's. I want to make sure that that one's tight. That wasn't too bad. I started about 1.30. It's five o'clock right now. I Do you need one of these, Dad? I film, I dilly-dally, had a couple snacks. You could probably do something like this in less than a year. One, you could probably easily do it in three hours. Ugh. Sticker. Thanks. Anyway, that's how you install RCS skid plates. If you like what we're doing, please support us by making sure you're subscribed to our channel. You can, you can subscribe to us by clicking on that little circle of me right there. The second thing you can do is you can shop our merch store. We have all kinds of fun swag like uh, t-shirts and patches and stickers and hats and hoodies and all kinds of crap like that. Plus the patches and stickers, we actually fulfill them ourselves and the kids write a little thank you note in there. So it's kind of fun. They're totally involved in that. I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much and thank you. Thank you, bye.